Right, for a change from the unboxing videos, I thought I'd do something a bit more interesting. Now, if you may not recognise this machine, if you're not from the UK, this is an Amstrad 6128 Plus. Made around 1991 by Amstrad. It was uh, still an 8-bit machine, based on the CPC, with enhanced graphics, still 128k RAM in this one. It loaded software off a cartridge, or also contained the uh, basic operating system as well on that cartridge, apart from burning rubber game. It also loaded software off a three inch drive, not three and a half like most other systems used, like the Amiga. Right, if I uh, dismantle it, I'll uh, a quick look around the machine and show you around the machine. First of all, we've got the cartridge slot, cartridge slot I mean, get it right. That's in there. Also, if you, when you switch the machine on, it actually locks in place so you can't get it back out. You got that, which to be honest, I don't know. I looked it up. It's like an audio jack. It's not tape input, unfortunately. Which is how I got. Joystick ports, standard 9 pin. Uh, an analog type joystick port. An auxiliary port. Strange, never used. I think it was might have been for a light pen or something, but they never brought it out. Going round, we have a printer port or a parallel port. Next to that, we have the expansion port. I think it had the same pin out as the original CPC, but not 100% sure on that one. Next is the 8 pin DIN for monitor. Next to that is the 5 volt power supply input. And next to that is the floppy interface. And if you notice, the floppy and the uh, expansion are Centronic things for these annoying clips that get in the way. So, without further ado, I'll uh, dismantle it and see what's in this old machine. I'll take that out first and uh, spin it round. Right, now I've got the machine turned around, let's uh, undo the screws. All standard uh, Phillips screws in this machine. None of your silly uh, shape ones that you find in things like Xboxes and knocking the tripod. That's very right, good again. I do enjoy knocking the tripod every time I do things like this. Right. Right, got those out. Put them to one side. One in the middle, and that one, take it and get it out like that. Right. There's a clip here, pushes up like that, there's one there, and one there. Right. And let's lift it up, and in we go. And you'll notice there is a couple of cables, one going to the power light. Which just clips like so. Oops, no break in it. And then you got this one. That's been awkward for the power switch. So we'll just put that one side. And now move it back a bit so you see it. Right. You can see it. Keyboard is fastened with some flex. Okay, we'll just turn that out. Um, basic keyboard. Fairly nice keyboard, actually. Right, put that one to the inside. Right. You noticed, I'll just zoom in slightly. And let it focus, that's it. Your main board is only 
not very big at all. It doesn't take all the machine up, it just takes a little top corner. What we'll do is take this cartridge uh, thing out, if it'll come out, because I know it's a bit of a... That's it, that's out. I've bent the pins, oh well, never mind, they'll straighten up after. Clumsy bugger I am. That's good, look at that. Oops, won't even focus. Bent those, but never mind, they'll straighten up when I put it back. Right, now I can see the chips a bit better in this machine. I'll see if I can remember what they all are. Screwdriver. Right. First of all, sound chip. As used in the original Amstrad, the Spectrum Plus 2, and a few other machines, including I think the Vectrex also used it. The Xilog Z80 processor, also used in the predecessor to the machine and the Spectrum. Next to that is a floppy controller chip. Also next to that one is another control chip that's to do with controlling the flopper. Then we've got the Amstrad, Amstrad Zone like Logic Gate Array chip. That one, and over there is like the graphics DAC chip. And there's your 64, no, got that wrong, 128k memory. And a few more Logic chips around there for for the disk drive and things. Fairly basic to be honest, it should average 8 bit machine. There is one extra feature of this thing. There you'll notice there's a port, I'll just bring it over a bit, there's a port there. See and zoom in and keep focusing. I don't think it'll stay focused. No it won't focus. You bugger, that's it. Right. That is for the tape interface, because what they did, Amstrad used the same motherboard for the four for the four six four plus as well as the six one two eight plus, so it made it easier. All they did were unpopulate some of the chips, so they didn't need that one or that one and some of the lot on them. A few of them was logic chips, but they had a tape interface instead because the tape drive fitted there. Only thing is, they never included a tape port on the 6128 plus which is a bit strange because a lot of software is tape only so how do you get it from tape onto this machine well I ain't done it yet you have to actually wire in those two of those pens that are just directly wired to that chip for audio from the cassette deck so all you have to do is wire one to receive one to transmit and basically you just wire it into a cassette. I ain't got around to doing it yet but I might do it in the future. So and then have a look at the floppy drive. I'll not take it off because it's well you've seen a floppy drive before so it uses a think memory serves me right if I can get my finger out of the way it uses a 26 pin connector not quite standard, but it is a standard drive anyway. But not. This is, as I said before, it's a three-inch one. Right. Apart from that, that's what it looks like inside a six one two eight plus. Hope you enjoyed, and if you have been, thanks for watching. Goodbye.